This is the X1S remote control. And in this video, I need you to stick around because I'm gonna show you everything that other people won't show you. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to set it up multiple different ways so that you can get the very most out of your remote control. You got your remote control, you got your hub, you got your power cable, you got your wall adapter. You've also got yourself a couple of infrared blasters so that you can reach this further across the room. Or if your hub is in a place that the infrared can't be seen, you can put out some infrared blasters so that they can be seen. On the back side of here is a button. You're gonna to wanna to hold your button until that green light flashes blue. When you flash blue, you're going to open up your Sofa Baton app and then you're gonna connect your app to your hub. All of that has already been done. Once you get that part of it set up, we're gonna go into the app and we're gonna walk it step by step now on how to take all of these remotes and condense them into one remote. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our app drawer down here on the lower left-hand corner where you are going to open up the Sofa Baton app. Now, this app is going to find my hub and connect it successfully, and which you've already done. Now we're gonna start programming our remotes. Now, I do have a TCL Roku Smart TV right back behind here. I'm not sure if you can see the red dot or not, but I do have a sound bar. It's a Hisense sound bar. And so we're gonna connect both of these. We've got a Blu-ray player, we can connect that. Over in the other room, I've got a Fire TV, we can connect that, but we're not going to today. I'm gonna to show you how to connect your TV and one other device, and then after you see how to connect that one other device, you're gonna be able to connect all of your other devices from your Xbox One to your sound bar or other music devices or other devices, smart devices in your home. First thing we wanna do is in the top right-hand corner where it says devices, we're gonna push that plus button and now we're going to connect our TV. There's three ways that we can do it. I'm gonna show you two. You can do the infrared or you can do the Wi-Fi. I'm gonna go ahead and do the Wi-Fi first because that's easiest. However, with the Wi-Fi, I do not get all of the features on the remote that I want. So I'm gonna click Wi-Fi. It's gonna search for my TV. There's my Roku TV. I'm gonna click that. And then you can see there's already an icon. I can change that icon to whatever I want. Uh, we're just gonna leave it as the TV. And we're also gonna leave the name as the 65 inch TCL Roku TV. We're gonna complete that. Now, what this is doing is taking information from the hub and it is, uh, and it is programming it into the remote control. Once this is all downloaded, then it's going to open up my app it's gonna open up my remote control and it's gonna start syncing the remote control. Once that is synced, I am really good to go. It's just that simple, that easy. Yes, it is that quick. All right, so now it does say 65 inch TV on there. From the app, I wanna show you a couple things on the app. We wanna complete this process and now you can see it says that the TCL TV is not complete. So we're gonna click the not configured. And the first thing that we wanna do is go into our power settings on the top. And then we've got some different options here that we wanna go through. How do, I, how do I want my TV to behave? Do I wanna turn it off? Do I wanna turn it off when it's not in use? Do I want it always on? Do I want it always on unless I push the power button? Or does the original remote not have a power button? Here is the original remote. There is a power button, so that option is out. The other ones are just gonna be personal preference. And so the way I'm gonna program this is to turn off when not in use. Then we can go down here to the power command. Power command is either only a power or separate power on and power off, which means that I would use a separate power on, separate power off from a different remote. I don't want that only a power is what we're gonna go with and we're gonna leave that as is. Now, because I chose that, now I need to set up some power options. And my power option is gonna be first power on, I'm gonna add the command to just power on with the trigger and then I want to power off with the trigger as well. And so on my power off, we're gonna hit that and that's going to trigger as well. So we can also change the time to immediately or to a delay. We just want it to work immediately. Now we are going to test this and we can test it on the remote control. 
Now what we want to do is power on, and it comes on just like that. And then we can scroll down here to the power off, and we can see that it's going to power off. So does this work? The answer to that question is yes. We'll turn that back on. Because whenever we're programming the hub and the remote control, we've got to have power on to our devices. So does it work? Yes, it works. Now, I can go back here and complete. Two different options here. Now my remote control is completely functional. I can use all of the features on the remote, except, let me get to that in just a moment. Um, you'll notice here on the screen that I also have a remote that I can use and I can, I can do everything from my phone if I can't find my remote. However, if you can't find your remote, there is another feature from the app where you can have your remote beep so you can find your remote when it's stuck down in the couch cushion. I'll show you that in just a moment. So uh, you can see on the app, the dark or highlighted buttons are the buttons that work. So the volume up down works, the fast forward, the reverse works. But you can see there are some that are grayed out like my my red, green, blue, and yellow down here on the remote on the app are grayed out, which means they're not functional. I can't use those. This is going to be your Paramount Plus. This is going to be your Netflix. This is going to be your Hulu, and they're not functional from the app, and they are not functional on the remote either. They just don't do anything. Now, because of this, we have to go back and reprogram the remote through infrared. However, we cannot do that in the current feature that we're in. Remember, we went with the Wi-Fi Connect. We went with the Wi-Fi Connect, and so this is what we get. Everything's good to go and ready to go. However, I don't have all access to my buttons, and I can't go back in and reprogram my buttons. I can't go back in and relearn my buttons. I can every other button except for these four buttons down here at the bottom. And let me show you what I mean here. Up on the app, if I push my edit button, now I can do all sorts of different things with my remote. I can add or repair commands, I can assign commands, I got my power settings, and I got my source configuration. We've already hit all those things once, except for the assign commands and remote keys. So when I select that, I get all of my remote keys. However, when I come down here to my Netflix, my Hulu, and my Apple TV, and my Paramount Plus, I can click that, not configured, and then these are my options. I don't have an option for Netflix. I don't have an option for Hulu. So I cannot necessarily program those keys the way that I would want them to be programmed. So that puts me at a loss. However, there is a fix to that. The fix is a long drawn out fix, but it can be done. So we're gonna go back now to a second type of setup. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to go into our TV and we're gonna delete that device and we're gonna set it up a different way. Now you can see on the remote, it says there are no devices. Everything has been cleared out. We're starting fresh from square one and we're gonna click uh, add device. And this time we're gonna select infrared because what infrared is going to allow you to do is take your original remote and program it into your brand new remote. So two options here. You got learning and you got searching. If you go with searching, you're going to search for your TV and then you're going to be able to just download all of the functions that are available into the hub. The hub's then going to sync it with your remote. You're going to be able to use it that way. My TV is not found in here because it is a newer TV that has not yet been updated to the app. So even if I was to download it that way and use it that way, I'm still going to miss out on my functions for my streaming channels. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go with the learning. And what we are going to be programming here is the TV. Now what we have here are all the functions that are available on this remote. Now the thing that we have to do now is every one of these keys I have to program with my old remote. I gotta go one by one. It just won't sync all of them at one time. You gotta do one by one. 
So the first thing that we have to do is always the power. Your power is gonna be click to learn, and then you're gonna take your power button and on top of your hub, there is a small circle. You can't see it, but there's a small white circle, and that is going to be where we're gonna point our, press our power button and point it at that circle. On your app, it's gonna say success. Now it's gonna be the up button or the up button here, and you can see on the remote, it was a success. Then we've got our down button. Every key you got to hit to learn, and then you've got to program it in there, and then you're able to use your remote after you finish it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just we've got those two. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to show you that I can program Netflix into this now. So I'm going to hit my to learn. I'm going to hit my Netflix, and that was a success. So I've only programmed three keys into the new remote. So we're going to finish that and we're gonna call this our TV and we're gonna complete. We're gonna download it from the hub to the remote control and complete that. Configure it just real quick like we did the other ones. We gotta hit our power settings and we're gonna leave it as is just so I can show you how this is working, our source configuration, uh, no need to do anything there. And so now you can see on the remote control, we only have a couple of keys that work. The up button works, the down button works, and the Netflix works. We'll do it first from the app. We can hit Netflix and we can open up Netflix. Then we can go down. We can go up. But we can't do anything else because all of the keys are grayed out. I can't go left, I can't go right. I can't do anything else there. So what we're going to do now is we are going to go back home. We're going to use our original remote because no other keys are programmed. So you would have to do that with every button that you have on your remote control and you've got to program it or infrared it, sync it with your new remote. That is going to be time consuming, but you're going to have all of your features on your remote and you're going to be able to use it as you did this remote. Now the only advantage to using this remote over this remote is that you can take all of these other remotes and you can put them all into one. So that's what we're going to do for you next. So what we're going to do, uh, rather than go through and program all these keys, I'm going to go back and just do the, the Wi-Fi connect and get that into my remote control. And then underneath my TV, I have a high sense, uh, I have a high sense sound bar. We're going to program that into to the remote as well. And I'm going to show you how to use both of these. So what we're going to do first, everything has to be done through the app. I'm going to click my edit button. I'm going to delete that device and we're going to start back over from square one and we're going to put the Roku TV in and we're going to do it Wi-Fi just so that I have it into my remote control and then we're also going to add our high sense sound bar we're going to complete that we're going to configure that all right so now we want to add our high sense sound bar so we're going to click our plus then we're going to click infrared we're going to search for it and we're going to start with a high sense sound bar you can see the high sense sound bar pops up there so we're going to click that we're going to click the audio and then we've got to program this or we can go with all the triggers that are already set. So we're going to leave it how it's preset. We're gonna click our next button. We got our high sense sound bar. We got our icon, just gonna leave it how it is. Complete that. And then we're gonna to have to uh, do our power source and, and uh, power settings and things like that. Just like we did with the TV. We're not gonna make any changes to it. We're just gonna jump right in so that we can then go and set an activity and I'll show you how that works as well. And now you can see I have highlighted keys which are available, which is the up and down and then the left and the right. Now on the remote control itself, what I have now at the top of the remote control is an off button and then I also have a back button. And the back button is going to take me to a main menu and on the main menu I have activities, devices, and set. So when you are looking at the devices here, I can click my, my scrolling ball right here and go up and down. So on my devices, you can see I got the TV and I got the soundbar. Now with that soundbar, 
I've got all of those options right there that I can scroll through or I can use the keys down here at the bottom to volume up and volume down. Now the thing about this remote control is that you've got to toggle between the two like this. And for example, we want to go home. And then on the home page, what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to Netflix just so that we can get some audio. You can hear the, the clicks. And then we're going to try to turn up that volume. And when I turn up the volume, I'm doing the TV volume. You can see that up there in the upper right hand corner. So what I want to do now is I want to click this button up here. We want to go to the high sense sound bar and we want to click the sound bar and we want to make sure that we have power on. And you can see the uh, hub flash. And I do have a light on my sound bar. You can't see it underneath the TV. Should we take the little dog off and have him on later? It's so iconic. Now we'll turn the volume up. And you'll notice there is no volume control in the upper right hand corner, which means I'm pro I'm using it just from the high sense sound bar. Welcome to Chateau Roosevelt. Welcome. There we go. Now we need to go back and we'll go back to the TV and we'll go back home. Now one of the last things that I want to show you here is how to create an activity. An activity is sort of like if this, then that. So if I do this, then I want that to happen. And so what I want to happen is when I turn my TV on, I want my sound bar to come on and we're going to go down here at the bottom. You've got devices, activities, and me. Um, on the activities, we are going to create an activity. Now, the devices that you're going to have set up on your, on your app are all going to be right here. So you see, I've only got two products that, or two devices that are in the remote right now, and I want both of them working at the same time. Yeah. And so I'm going to select both of those. Then I'm going to go to next. And what I want to happen is to uh, not change the, the power source. We're going to make sure that these are everything is connected successfully and everything is valid. And then we're going to go into our activity. So the, what this activity is telling me here is these three buttons, the volume up, volume down, and the mute button is going to be controlled by the high sense. I can control that or change that if I wanted to, to either one of those, but not both. So I want the high sense to control my volume. Next, I want the TV to control everything else. You can see that on the remote or on the app here. Now, after that, we can program this to, let's just say it's movie night. So we're gonna leave it at movie. We're gonna change the icon to, uh, to an N maybe for Netflix or movie night, well, you know. They just kind of go together. Complete that. Then it is going to sync with the hub. Hub's going to sync with the uh, remote, and then I'll show you what that looks like. So on the movie app, I can run it from my phone, or I can run it from the remote control. You can see that it is now syncing that activity. And now what we have here, we push our back button here. Now what we have here, activities. There's movie night. Super nice there. Last thing that I do want to show you is in the app, in the app, there are some things that we can do. We can edit it if we want to. We can assign keys. We can do what we need to do if we need to, just like I've shown you in the past. We're just going to leave everything as is right now. And we're going to go back to devices and click me now. And in the me is going to be personal information here. You're going to see your settings for your X1S hub, switch to another soap baton remote. And I can do that if I wanted to, no need to do that. Uh, video tutorials there. It's going to walk you through, but it's not going to show you everything that I just showed you. They're going to have some very helpful videos, but they don't take you through step by step. Uh, and then here's another, here's the neat thing that I wanted to show you is that when you click the settings under the hub, you can pair a new remote, you can find my remote, you can sync remote, you can do whatever you need to do here. But listen to this. If I've 
lost my remote and it's down into a seat cushion. I can click find my remote. And it's gonna beep until I find it. And then you can push any button to shut that off. Super nice. So there you go. That is a step-by-step -step how to use the Sofa Baton X1S remote. And I tell you what, it is a super slick remote. You can connect up to 60 different devices. You can create all sorts of different activities. You, you can really make your life easier when it comes to remotes rather than having, look, there. I've got five remotes sitting out right here. I've got another remote over there. You can connect all sorts of different smart devices to this remote control and keep it all in one. Then you got that scrolling ball and with a clicker, I think that you're really gonna like it. It's gonna make life so much easier.